Welcome back to another OpenTunes tutorial. In this video, I'll show you how to use the Skeleton tool to create a rig for uh, anything uh, that you want to animate. I'm going to be doing a 2D character. In the last video, I created this character here. Uh, it's an SVG, and we could just bring in this SVG. This is what it looks like totally uh, the complete character. But then I actually exported out every little individual, well, not every part that I wanted to animate individually. So I have different parts of the arm, I have different parts of uh, of the face, there's a shoe there. And so I'll show you first of all, Just I could bring in the entire SVG like this and go import. But if I do that, um, what it actually does, it puts everything in one level. And in order to use the skeleton tool, I need uh, them to be on their own columns. And so that's okay. I, I still can click and, and modify and change individual parts of this. We can change colors of things in here. But the problem is, uh, what I really want to do is connect these using the skeleton tool. And to do that, I need to click on something like the shoe here. I click on the shoe and go Control X. Now the shoe is not on this level. And I come over here to column two and go Control V and paste it. And so what I, what I need to do is get every one of these items on its own level. And so to do that, the easiest thing for me to do is just to have them in PNGs. Plus, if you're already, maybe you created your artwork in something like Photoshop or GIMP, so you might already have it separate like this. And so what I'm going to do, there's actually certain parts I'm not going to bring in. I'm just going to select all of these, and I'm not going to do all the different parts of the face. So I think just these are the parts I want to do. Okay, perfect. I'll left click and drag in just the ones I want and go to import. Uh, and now it brings them all in and it does put them all on their own level in their own column, which is exactly what I want. And it puts them all right on top of each other. So now I need to move each one of these body parts to the place that they're going to go. They're just right now I just lined up all the centers of each one of them. So I'll just click on whichever part like this part of the leg here and I'll go to the animate tool and I'll make sure that I'm selected on the leg. And see right now it says camera one. So I just want to go to actually column eight is what I'm really trying to move. And I'll just move it right down to here. And then same thing. So I'll just find the next part of the leg I want. So I'll go through and find every part that I want to move and move it into the place that it needs to be. I'll just speed up the video during that process. Okay, so now I have everything where it needs to go. And you'll notice I actually didn't do a right arm and left arm because I'm just going to do mirror copies of each of these. So what I'm going to actually do... Um, I'm going to want to rearrange my columns a little bit too, first of all. Like, I want the head to be over here closer, just doesn't really matter, but I'm going to put it on column two. So we'll put it, uh, or what's on column one? Yeah, I'm going to put the body on column one, I'll put the head on column two. Um, and I'm going to want to copy parts of these. So this arm here, this bicep, I'll just click on it, and I'll just go uh, right click, or I can't right click, I'll go control C to copy. And I'll right click, click up here and go uh, insert after and that'll make a new column for me that I can click on here and just go V to paste it and so now I have a second um, part of the arm here I can click and move that one and put it here and yeah, that'll work I could I could reverse it around but I'm just gonna keep it just like that and then same with this forearm we'll just go uh, control C to copy and then right click Then the hand is one that we probably need to reverse the, the direction of. So to do that, we, we can stay on the animate tool and we just go to uh, scale. And then we just turn this one to a negative under H. We just go negative 100 and that reverses it around. So what it's really doing is it's scaling it down. Like if we were to do this um, negative 50%, it just like squishes it. And so it squishes it down to zero, then it squishes it back the other way. It's a little bit confusing, but that's how you would. That's one way to rotate um, something around, is just by changing it to negative there. So now the hand is reversed. And then, oh, Control Z. I didn't want to scale it. Move it back to position and put the hand back where it needs to go. Okay. And then also, if you notice the position of all of these, well, first let me let me copy this leg. Uh, one thing I want to touch up here too is on the little corner of the body. There's a little. I exported out a little part of blue here that I didn't want. So I can just grab the erase tool and fix that real quick. Oh, I have to be selected on that level. And I can just get rid of that so that won't be a problem for us. 
So I'm going to copy this leg, but to do it, I'm going to try to do all three of them at the same time. So I'll select the shoe, the frame with the shoe in it, hold down shift, and do the calf and the thigh as well. And then I'm going to, going to go control C to copy, then come over here and go control V. And it'll paste all three of those on their own. Uh, it doesn't copy the positioning that we've done them, which is fine. Um, the next thing I want to do is move all the, the centers of these. So once everything's in position and on its own level, uh, I want to change the center of everything. So we go to the body first, we go to the animate tool, and instead of position, we change the center. So the center of this one's pretty good. It's already showing basically the center. We could move it if we want it to be higher. This is just the point that things are going to be pivoting around and also where things are going to bend. So on the head, it says the center is here. So this the head would bend like this. If we go to rotation, we can kind of see what it would bend like. And that's not how we want our head to bend. We want it to bend at the neck. So I want to move the center down to here. Again, that's under animate and then change the center of it. And so now when we, if we were to rotate, which this isn't how we're going to do the animation with the skeleton tool, but if we were going to animate like this, we can just kind of see how it would rotate around. Um, so then we'll just do the same thing, go to center, I'll speed up and go through and re reset the center of every one of these. So really we're just sent setting the hinge point with these. Right now I have this thigh selected here and if I go to rotate it, the problem is I'd have to rotate this and then move the, the calf and the foot manually. They're not connected on there. So as if you only had simple simple arms and legs coming out that didn't have other connecting parts like fingers and things you could get away with just doing the rotation and do your animation that way but the skeleton tool when you have more connected parts um, that's why you have to use the skeleton tool so now that we have our, our centers I, I relocated to all the hinge points and we have all of our uh, different parts of the body put on their own uh, column now we need to go over I've been in the basics tab up until now we need to go over to the animation tab or just bring up the stage schematic but the animation tab has the stage schematic which is over here in the bottom and we can scroll in and out and I apologize on my computer it's a little bit hard to see and so if we click on like this one that everything's connected to it's called table on mine first with my theme I've tried to fix it but I have to click on them to be able to read what, what they are anyway so this first one column one is associated with column one over here so column one is body and see luckily I named these um, before I exported them or I, I named the PNG file and so it's showing the name of the PNG file and also the name of the column we could also rename the column or we can rename the level too but so column one is the body and so that's where I want everything to be tied into and so what I really want to kind of do what I like to do is take all of these different things and if I, I'm just going to double click this real quick. I'll double click my stage schematic so we can see just this. So to move these around, you left click on one, you can actually move one of these nodes around. And I want my body to be the one that's tied into the table. So right now it is tied in, but everything else is tied in too. But I want everything else to tie into the body, basically. So I go over here, this is a thigh, this is a, so the head. I'm just going to move the head to be up here. And then I click this blue dot and connect it to the red dot on the body. And then the body is connected to the table. So this one we have bicep. I don't know if it's the left one or the right one. We'll have to figure that out. Forearm. Hopefully I'm doing this right. I think I'm doing it right. Hand. Hand. Shoe. So I should have named my shoes left shoe and right shoe. I can go back and do that. Calf, thigh, shoe calf, thigh. So you see what I'm kind of doing here? I'm kind of trying to build a uh, like the what the body looks like in here. It doesn't really matter. These can be anywhere, these nodes. But what I really want to do is just tie tie them in this way. So we go red to blue, or blue to red, blue to red, blue to red on all of these. You, you kind of have to do this a couple times until it makes sense. We go blue to red, blue to red, blue to red. Uh, we just want to make sure that the only thing connected into our main table is just the core of the body. And everything else needs to be connected in like this. So this one 
is not going the right way. I wasn't paying attention when I was doing it. This needs to go here. That needs to go there. That needs to go there. Perfect. All right, everything looks really good now. And then this is our camera. We can leave it floating out here too. Now if we double click stage schematic and go back, we see some kind of crazy things happen. So we need to maybe reposition some of these. Maybe we did that out of order a little bit. Okay, I've renamed some of these to go back to my uh, stage schematic. So I can just see, make sure that I have left. So it turns out the only things I mixed up was my shoes. Well, actually, basically, these need to be over here because they're the right side. These need to be over here because they're the left side. So I've got all my left side parts over here. And I'll just relink these like this. And now we should be just great. So I just, I just went and renamed R and L for right and left side. And so now we have everything. Uh, correctly mapped. Okay, let's go back in here. And so now I just need to uh, re-locate uh, these. So we go to position, and I just need to move this hand back to where it should be. Um, this might happen for you. It depends on the order that you do it in. You might not have this issue. Um, I should have maybe, maybe I should have mapped, linked everything together first and then positioned it. That maybe would have helped me avoid this situation. Because what it did, it depended. It depends on the order that I, I linked them together in that schematic. Because what's happening now is they're moving relative to each other. So, grab this calf. I'll show you in one sec here. See, so I just want to show you what happened. The reason that they were in the wrong place is they're moving relative to each other. So this shoe, we linked it in the stage schematic. This left shoe is right here. And it's linked to this left calf. So when we click on it in the schematic, it also lights up here in the drawing. But if we move this one, so if we move this left calf, it knows the shoe is supposed to move with it because that's what we've told it. But in the order that we put them in, it made the shoe kind of go to a, a strange place at first. So let's just move that back up here and everything's good. So now when we move, for example, like this whole leg, well, we don't want to move it, but when we go to rotate, it will rotate with everything connected, even without using the skeleton tool. And when we go to rotate, like uh, with the arm here, we can click on it either on the schematic to do it, or we can click on it on the level to do it. Oh, so that one looks like it's not connected there for some reason, so we gotta find out why. So that right bicep looks like it's tied into the body, but then everything else is tied into the body directly too. This part of the arm needs to be tied into the bicep instead. So we'll go to here, like this, and now that should work properly. I just have to re reposition it now, and that'll work now. So now when we go to rotate this, it'll rotate with the whole arm like it's supposed to. So we'll go through and test, make sure everything's working that way, and then we can finally get into our skeleton tool. Um, we can only use the skeleton tool once we've done all of this. So. So to use the skeleton tool, we just come down here and click on it. There's this tool right here on the left-hand side. We click skeleton tool, and it shows a skeleton already created. This skeleton is based off of the schematic that we created. So if we made a, a problem, an error in the schematic, there'll be an error in the skeleton as well. Um, don't worry about the build skeleton mode. We'll just go to animate, and we can click on any uh, object. So we click on the hand and rotate just the hand. We can click on this. Oop, we don't want to click on the move part. We could move it though. We can move different parts. Sometimes you want to move like, I didn't do the eyebrows and the eyes and the mouth. But those are ones that you might want to move sometimes. So any part that you click on, we can just simply rotate and move quickly. We can also do this inverse kinematics, which is something that basically, we click an anchor point. Right now the anchor point is the center of the body. Whatever the blue square is, is the anchor point. And then we can grab and move this hand and it kind of moves everything around like it uh, it not, doesn't just rotate, like you can play guitar or something, you know? And so we can move around different parts independently from the other ones. And then, of course, we just come in and we do some keyframing. So we just would drag all of these. We uh, cl click, go to the first one, shift, click, and then drag all these down to get some nice frames. Uh, I actually, I'm only going to do like 24 because it takes a little bit on this particular model to render on my computer. So we come up here, we make sure we set a keyframe, and then we just move, uh, go back down to 20, let's go to 12. It doesn't matter which one we're in at this point because they're all linked together. So we make some changes here, and then we go down to 24, 
and make some more changes. And then we just go to loop through. And it goes through and renders this all out. I guess it didn't take too long. And then if we want to move him, I guess I'm, I'm really covering a lot in this video. So if I lose you, I apologize. But if we want to move him as well, it's also in the stage schematic. We can just come in here and we can right click and go new pegboard. And then we can actually just have this pegboard uh, go. So we, we tie the body the main part of the body here to this pegboard and now and then the pegboard goes tied into our table and now whatever we do with this pegboard we can actually select the pegboard from this drop down called peg one and now wherever we move the pegboard is where our guy will go oh I'm on rotate now we can we can do a lot we can resize we can position so we can have it start down here start small I'm making changes to the pegboard right now and then we can also, uh, then we come down here and go to position, and where was I at? So we'll set the key here at frame one, and then by frame 24, we maybe want the character to be here and to be a little bit larger. Or smaller, maybe they're falling far away. And then we just go through, and we can see, whoa! I guess I set my first frame somewhere else at like frame 20. Anyway. This video is getting a little bit long, but that's uh, hopefully you're kind of seeing using the skeleton tool, and hopefully you learn how to do that. It really, it's understanding the stage stage schematic here, um, and then once you get everything in the stage schematic, the skeleton tool just works. So that's kind of how it is. Hopefully that made sense to you. Go ahead and uh, feel free to ask questions or comment, leave your comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this informative. And I'll catch you in the next video.